Hey, what's guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about the EG4 6000 XP and its long-term ownership, right? So when I say long-term, I mean pretty much just about a year and a few months, right? So we've ordered this inverter as soon as it came out in 2023, I think-ish, uh, around October, according to our order status. And we've had it installed ever since, and it's been on, you know, pretty much somewhere in this basement doing its thing on the almost the entire time, except for occasional maintenance around the system, right? But it's been on continuously continuously for little over a year and it's been working pretty much non-stop right so uh we're gonna i don't want to say retire but we're gonna see how, how it really works out because we bought the 12,000 xp and then we're gonna install the 12,000 xp and it's gonna pretty much take over the, all the load of what's going on up in here but i will go ahead and say this is not a full review of this particular inverter we if, if you want that there's plenty of videos and we have videos on our channel about that but this is really talking about the long-term review and if we ran into any issues or any problems or you know what we really think about it after a year so if you want to know more about that stick with us First things first, let's talk about what the system is connected to. This EG4 6000 XP is connected to two indoor uh, EG4 wall mount batteries, a tower of server rack, a uh, life power four and LL batteries, and another tower of AO lithium batteries. And they're all connected in parallel with BMS communications working only on uh, the uh, indoor wall mount batteries and the one uh, life power V2 battery. Some of the other uh, batteries that are connected in the system don't have BMS communication set up, but I'm okay with that, right? So uh, the other thing is connected to is connected to a ground mount array and we're only using one MPPT for that um, and we also have it connected to this load center this is not a sub panel um, this inverter has not been connected to grid I think maybe once we were testing but like ever since that never again uh, has been connected to the grid so this inverter has not really been used for charging so if you want to know long term about charging through a uh, grid yeah we can't help you too much with that but uh, so that's what's connected to, like I said, it's not a sub panel, it is a load center and it's been working pretty much uh, really well. I do want to go ahead and point out a small disclaimer. We're going to go look at the portal in a little bit, but I will go ahead and point out that uh, the portal will say we've generated and used somewhere around 1.5 megawatts of energy through this. And I'm going to go ahead and say that is not entirely accurate. There was a few weeks where we were using it without the internet connectivity. There was a few weeks we were using it after it's been connected. Then we had some issues, decided to move it around and recreate it and that somehow reset the data or something like that. So it's, it's, it's not entirely accurate, but ever since it has been logging, it it uh, says about 1.5 megawatts, right? So before you go ahead and say, that's not a lot over the course of a year and like three months, well, uh, I do wanna point out, we've done a lot of work in order to minimize the energy usage that we need or the energy footprint that we need. So uh, if you're gonna design a system, make sure you, know, you don't just try to replace the energy needs that you have, but maybe try to be a little bit more efficient. That's just a tip that I wanna point out. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out is that uh, this uh, EG4 6000 XP right now is only powering a few components, right? So it empowers this entire basement, which has all the lights. Uh, it has two dehumidifiers and then uh, one window AC unit here. It also powers on, from the load center, the uh, upstairs uh, 24 BTU Pioneer mini split and the uh, Mr. Cool 12,000 BTU mini split and it's been powering that just fine and because we've been through all four seasons um, over a year with this I can go ahead and confidently say we have not had a single issue uh, with uh, any part of this system except one I will talk about that in a little bit right but in terms of reliability um, and it working out and everything working as perfectly designed as it should be, we have not had an issue. And only recently we've installed the uh, Tesla wall charger and we've been able to uh, charge the Tesla at pretty much close to uh, 6,000 watts continuous, I wanna say about three times uh, to, to really drain a lot of the batteries down. And that's probably where I would say we've had one very small issue really, really early on. So the one small issue that we had really early on is that, um, we just weren't consuming enough energy. Like I said, we did a lot of stuff to uh, minimize our energy footprint, but with all the batteries connected, we just weren't draining it and cycling the batteries enough to uh, 
to, to uh, minimize the state of charge drift, right? So we were generating a lot of power, but all the LED lights in the basement don't use a lot of power, right? And because the uh, it's it's a basement and it's you know underground on almost almost four sides, but three sides technically, uh, the the window AC unit doesn't really need to run that much. It pretty much stays cool all the time down here, right? So even though it is connected to that kind of stuff, we don't draw a lot of power from it. And that way, and because of that, the state of charge kind of drifted on the battery and then that you know eventually caused a huge shutdown later because it had no idea what the state of charge was but i will go ahead and point out that is really more of a system designer installation uh, fault mainly because we just didn't put the right capacity of batteries but it's not really a fault of the inverter i do want to point that out so if you're gonna design a system make sure you build it out properly or make sure you just you know consume the energy that you generate and stuff like that anyways point is we'll stop jibber jabbering about that also uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that this filter has really not been clean inside of this basement or on this uh, inverter and it's been working out pretty well for us. Our basement here is not finished. We did do a lot of work to minimize the dust inside the basement like uh, put up air barriers and uh, paint some of the walls and tape off you know uh, different parts of the basement but the ground is still unfinished and everything is still exposed right so it works really well and I'm almost sad to say we're going to retire this because you know it works so well I haven't had a hiccup in almost you know ever since we've installed it so it's a really good system and if you're thinking about should I get the 6000 XP? How is it over, you know, after a megawatt? How is it after a year? It's fine, right? I think anybody you talk to can probably say that they have had too many issues i will go ahead and say before this we had two uh, eg4 6500 ex's and for me i haven't had any issues with that i know some people have had issues but we haven't had any issues uh we don't have like lights flickering or anything like that and anytime the ac units come on they're like mini splits so lights still don't dim um so you know i if i could highly highly confidently say we recommend this unit i believe this unit is probably the best single unit like all-in-one system that you can get for the money what do i mean mean by that uh, if you go back three or four years ago and you wanted to build the same capable system it would have been more components it would have cost more it would have been probably less reliable in terms of the open issues with you know something like that and you as the end user would have had to connect more devices kind of along with the components to it right so that also means you taking up more wall space and and you know dealing with all different kinds of uh distributors and and companies for warranties and all that kind of stuff right but now we've gotten to a point in the industry where we have solid all-in-one units which are more reliable which cost less which have more capability which take up a lesser footprint and also have you know all the things that you need connected i believe we are really moving forward in the industry and we are really glad to be you know at a living in a time where we can see that happening right so the the partnership that eg4 and lux power have to really produce these units and then just send them to distributors and you know get them in public's hands it's actually i think is game changing because three or four years ago that would have been unheard of it would have been you know really challenging so i believe that this unit was really really game changer also with like the uh you know 18k i think sometime came out close around that time or whatnot so uh would i go out and buy this unit again if i need the exact capability of this unit or any single unit 240 split phase capable system i would definitely go out and buy this again in a heartbeat we're going to keep running this unit especially around christmas time since we have you know uh, inflatables and balloons and lights and all this stuff so if we run into any issues we'll let you know but i don't see us running into any units especially or any issues uh mainly because it's been uh working well so far and we kind of understand the the limits of the system so if, make, if you're like uh, doing things make sure if you set it up right you're just not gonna have any issues just plug play program it change a few items get it to work right so uh, that's our long-term review of this unit it's been working pretty well if you have any questions let us know if it runs into any issues we'll let you know but otherwise have a great day thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time